Welcome back everybody. Where we left off, we had all the different chess pieces in their correct place. So now what we need to do is we need to start having some functionality so we can actually move these chess pieces. So the first thing we're going to need to do is open up our game script because we have a few new functions that we're going to need to add. All right, first of all, right below set position, we're going to need to create a set position empty. So in order to have a, a individual piece move, we want to be able to set the place that it is currently at to be empty. And yeah, all we need to do is access that uh, positions array at x and y and just set it to null. That shows that it is, there's nothing there. Next, we need to create a public game object get position. So we want to be able to return the actual game object at a given position. So just int x and int y again. And then we just need to return the positions x and y array variable there. And then lastly, the third function that we're going to need to make is a public bool position on board into x and into y again. So for this one, it's a little bit uh, longer of code that we need to set up. So we need to see if the x is less than zero or if the y is less than zero or if the x is greater than or equal to positions dot get length of zero. So what this says right here is that we need to get the length of one of the two dimensions of the array, the first dimension, so the x dimension in this case. And then we need to do the same thing on the positions matrix and get the length of the first dimension, or in this case, really the second. So if any of these situations are too true, we need to return false, actually. And then otherwise, we can just return true. So we want to see if the position that we're given, the x and y coordinates, are actually on this board. And that might seem kind of useless right now, but it's actually pretty useful because we'd have to be putting this check in a bunch of different places in our code. And instead, we're actually creating a name for it, which uh, is a big benefit for us so we can actually understand kind of what this code really means. Next, what we need to do is we actually need to download a quick file. So we need to uh, download something called the move plate, which I actually have in the description available for you. So you can just follow that link and then download this or create it yourself real quick. It's just a 20 by 20 little PNG file. And then you actually need to drag that in to your sprites tab where we have all of our other sprites for this game. Okay, and what we need to do with it is click on it. Again, switch the mode from bilinear to point. And also we need to just drag the image in, press apply, and set the scale to 3.5 and 3.5. So then it actually matches up pretty closely to the actual board in the game. And we also want to change the color to black just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing or you can change it to whatever color you'd like to change it to so yeah now we need to make this move plate into an actual object that we can use so we need to go over to our objects tab and then drag the move plate over to here and that creates it into actually a prefab as it's called the prefab asset and then we can just delete it from here because we want to instantiate it or create it through code instead of actually putting it into the scene ourselves. Next, what we need to do is create an actual move plate script. So just go into the scripts folder and create a C sharp script. Perfect. And we can open that right up. So 
first of all, we can just delete these two functions for now. And we can, again, have a reference to the controller. Usually pretty important. And then we also need a reference, so we can just call it reference. So when you actually click on any given chess piece, it will create the move plates. And those move plates need to have a reference back to whatever chess piece it was created by. So that's how we're going to handle this with our code here. And next, we just need to have sort of an X position and a Y position on the board. So we need to remember these are board positions, not world positions. OK, perfect. And then we need to make a true or false to see if it is actually an attack piece. So sometimes a unit can move to a location or they can move to a location and when they move to it they're actually attacking or taking the place of another chess piece of the enemy's team so i'm just going to write here false is movement and true is attacking just for clarification so Depending on which one it is, we are going to need a little bit of different functionality. And we also want to actually have the move plate itself be a different color, depending on which case we're talking about. And we also have a few functions that we're going to need to implement. So right when this move plate is created, we will activate its start function. And inside this start function, we want to see if it is actually an attack piece. So if it is true that it's an attack piece, then we want to change to red. So we want to change the color of this sprite to red. So in order to do that, we can actually call game object. So remember, this is a script component, so we can access the game object itself. And then we can get the component of a sprite renderer and this sprite renderer has a color variable and we can set that to a new color of red and just set the green and blue to zero and then also it has an alpha so we want to set that to one so it is not transparent at all it's completely sort of opaque and after we have that set up we can also create a on mouse up function. So this is equivalent to someone actually tapping on the move plate itself. So what we want to do is we want to have the controller to game object and we want to uh, actually find a game object with a given tag and we want to find the game controller because we're setting the controller equal to the game controller here. And again we want to see if this is an attack. So when someone actually clicks up on the mouse or with their finger, because we're making this for a phone, then what happens is the chess piece will move to that new location. So if it is true that this is an attacking piece, we have to get rid of that old chess piece that was there. So we can access that chess piece through the controller. And we can do get component and we can get that game script that we had before. And then what we want to do is we want to use the get position function. Because if you remember, that get position function actually returns the chess piece. So we're accessing the matrix X and matrix Y because that's the position that this move plate is currently at. And yeah, so the get position returns whatever variable was at the position or whatever game object was at this positions. Okay, so we have access to this chess piece. So let's just destroy it. That's some pretty simple code that we can implement right there. And next, what we're going to need to do is set the controller's original location to be empty. So Again, we access the game, and then we set the position empty. And we have to go back to our reference, 
and get the component of the chessmen. And we have to get the X board position from that. And we have to do the same thing for the Y board position. So yes, this code is going to be a little bit messy here because we're doing lots of accesses. So what we're doing here is we're telling the controller to set that position empty wherever our reference originally was. So we tapped on the move plate and we've given it a new position, right? So the position it used to be at needs to be set to empty because it's moving. So we also have a few things that we need to change in the reference now, now that it's moving. So what we can do is we can just uh, get the component chessmen again, and then we can set the export position to the matrix X, which is its new location, and we can copy that and we can set the Y to the Y position, whoops. So we can set that to matrix Y. And then we can uh, copy that code once more because we have a third thing we need to do, which is simply set the coordinates. So that's a special function that we use to keep track of everything for us because we set its X and Y position, so. Next, we need to get the component of the game from the controller. And we also need to call set position on the reference again here, because we need the controller to be able to keep track of where um, the reference is too. So both sides need to be keeping track. That's what's going on here. And since it's moved, the last thing we need to do is actually destroy the move plates. So this is not a function that we've really implemented yet. However, we will get to it in the next tutorial. So after that, we can also uh, have the same function that we had before, but this time it's for the move plate instead. And yeah, so it's a really simple setter where we just set that equal to x and that equal to y and beyond that we just have two more functions just the set reference so when this move plate is being created it needs to be possible for the object to be set as a reference so we just do reference equals object and I need to reset those names. Okay, and then lastly, public game object get reference. So this is simply for some other object like a controller or the chess piece to be able to get whatever this move plate move plate has a reference to. All right, perfect. So we've implemented a lot of new code in uh, this new move plate script here. And next time what we're going to do is we're going to actually put that uh, script onto the move plate object. And then we're going to need to add a lot more code to the chessmen script because there's a lot of things we need to get working in order for the, this move plate functionality to work. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you stay tuned for next time.